Hi, this is Andrew Jagger, Marketing Manager with Walters Garden. And today, we're going to look at Baptisia. It's the beginning of June, and after a hot Memorial Day weekend, these plants have really started to pop in our display gardens, so I thought I'd take this chance to walk you around and show you some of the cool varieties that we have in our catalog. Baptisia is a perennial that we have been working with for a long time. We have multiple decades of breeding going into our introduction, going back a uh, number of years to when we started our program, Baptisia australis, also known as false indigo, uh, was one of the most common plants that you could find from this genus. There's a lot to love about that plant. Excellent garden size, four and a half, five feet even in height, especially early in the year. It comes up quickly, fills in quickly, long live, pollinators love it, tolerates clay, tolerates heat, tolerates full sun. Really, it's a perennial that can't be beat. However, there's so many other species, and even though we love Baptisia australis, it does have some flaws. The flower scapes don't tend to be very long, doesn't have the longest uh, window of bloom. Also, with that height, not a lot of stem strength to back up those blooms. So once it finishes blooming and goes to seed, typically, unless it's perfectly sighted, the habit tends to donut, and you have this big, sprawling, five-foot mess in your garden. So we started looking first at ways that we can improve upon that. We look for more stem breaks in order to create more flowers, to create a secondary flush. So after the first flush ends, you get another wave of blooms. We also look to extend the flower spikes because each flower spike, if it has more length, typically has more flowers as well. I'm standing right next to uh, Baptisia decadence lemon meringue. Lemon meringue, probably the Baptisia that we're the most famous for. It's one of my personal favorites. Excellent garden height, about three and a half, four feet tall. Very dark stems, nice lemon yellow flowers. Long season of bloom. Flowers come just above the foliage for an excellent display. Well-rounded habit, and it holds this shape pretty much all year long. Uh, in front of it, we have Baptisia American Gold Finch. So this one, we get a lot of questions. What's the difference between American Gold Finch and Lemon Meringue? Well, the first obvious one should be height. Um, goldfinch, you can see, about a foot shorter. Also, a bit of a wider habit. Flower shapes also tend to drape down a little bit more. You don't have as much of an elegant base shape as you do with lemon meringue. But both plants, exceptional plants, great garden performance. I'd put either one of them in my yard. We'll keep moving down the line. This next plant, Baptisia decadence, sparkling sapphires, also a proven winner's perennial. Uh, you can see it has a fairly similar shape to American Goldfinch. A little bit lower, a little bit wider, exceptionally long flower shapes. This plant has just started to get going. You can see it's only budded about halfway up the stem, but also already you can see that incredible amount of color you're getting. This is one of our darkest purples that we have uh, in our catalog. And that's set off against a nice medium green foliage. So this is sparkling sapphires. Um, compared to Blueberry Sunday, Blueberry Sunday is more of a uh, more neutral blue, more mid-blue than what you would get with Sparkling Sapphires. Blueberry Sunday will also be a little bit taller, have a little bit more of that rounded lemon meringue style habit. Okay, next up we have two varieties from our Decadence Deluxe collection. So what's the difference between a Decadence Baptisia and a Decadence Deluxe? Well, Deluxe gives you a little bit extra. So in order to get a lot of those desirable characteristics, excellent branching, stronger flower stems, that piece got quite a bit shorter. And now we're working to put some of that height back into the genus. So here we have uh, pink truffles. Pink truffles, exceptionally long flower scapes again, much longer than what you would get on the straight species. Uh, this is also what we believe to be the first pink Baptisia that was introduced to the market. And this one will be a bit more leggy it's got a lot of stem exposed in order to give you all of that height, but this is a great perennial for underplanting. Um, then another cool thing that you can get with Baptisia, you get a little bit of a bicolor. So here we have pink lemonade, and this one, the flowers on a dark charcoal stem, the buds are that kind of lemon yellow color, similar to lemon meringue, but as they age, they transition into this really bright rosy pink shade. All right, so let's keep working through the color spectrum of Baptisia. Kind of nice how many different colors you can get. One of the nice things about there being so many different species and so much diversity within the genus. Um, 
first, let's talk about um, Burgundy Blast. This is one of our newest introductions. As you can see, it's got an exceptionally red-purple flower. That red color is not naturally occurring in Baptisia, so to see that color, that amount of red in it, is a, quite a bit of a breeding breakthrough. Most people would look at it and still say it's purple, but if you're looking for something that's got a lot of those burgundy tones, burgundy blast, that's one for you. Next we have Cherry's Jubilee. So this is a plant with a lot of flower color on it. Dark stems, a uh, purple bud that opens with a yellow keel and then it turns into that sort of caramel color. It has a nice mix of purple, yellow, and caramel color. And this is going to be in that nice three, three and a half foot size for your garden. Next we have Honey Roasted. Uh, fairly similar to Cherry's Jubilee, except that it again is shorter and has a darker flower color than what you would get on Cherry's Jubilee. But again, still set off by that nice bright yellow peel to the flowers. Thank you for joining me for this video. I hope you learned something new about Baptisia and I hope even more that you're considering adding one to your landscape. It truly is a wonderful perennial. Be sure to follow us for all of our updates.